Hey everybody, it's Shinobi, and this is episode 3 of Shy256. And so today, uh, you know, I'm still kind of debating where to like land here with this show thematically, as far as the content that I cover and how I handle it. So I've decided at least for the next couple episodes, I'm going to kind of concentrate on second layers and just kind of go over some thoughts and just high level views and ideas about that. And really, I kind of want to start off from really the the highest level view I've been thinking about them for the, the past maybe six months or so. And just really thinking like as long term in the future as I can. And you know, one of the things I'm starting to realize is like we not only have a, a pretty decent arsenal of second layers right now in the Lightning Network, um, the improvements to that in channel factories, state chains, uh, the side chains like Liquid, and the fact that all of these other layers can be built on that as well. And you know, there's just a lot of stuff here, as well as custodial centralized things that's just going to be a mess of different ways to interact in different protocols and you know really I, i'm kind of very roughly i've started thinking about these in like three main ways and that's kind of the centralized layer you know something like coinbase or, or a bitcoin paypal uh, a federated layer like liquid so, some environment that's kind of custodial but not some unilateral party in control and then protocols like lightning network which there are are pretty much like a multi-party static output protocol so just just a way for multiple people to manage or alter control of a utxo without destroying it and making a new one and you know all of these things are going to have different use cases that really draw users. A lot of people are going to want the simplicity of the custodial things. A lot of people are going to make the the trade-off between the two for a federated environment. And a lot of people are going to want to use these multi-party static output protocols to have as much decentralization and control of their money as possible. But that has a lot of consequences economically when you really start to think about you know, fungibility. Like if you, if we have these pools of money start to develop and segregate themselves in different environments with friction in between them interacting, like that's a big problem. And, you know, there's really nothing in principle that prevents those from being highly interactive. Like, you know, liquid in the main chain, you can atomically swap, like you can link scripts on those two different systems. And, so like really what I think needs to happen in kind of the, the medium to long term is a, really like a meta protocol for all second layers to allow them to negotiate and atomically link things between these different layers. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of friction in these different layers interacting or like linking between each other. And that will have serious economic consequences in the long term. If you just have these pools of money that there's a much higher cost to link or move between or interact with. And that's just not a good thing. And I'm not saying this is something that like needs to get done like right now overnight, like, uh, a lot of the second layer protocols that there there are designs for still need improvements on the, the main chain. They, they still need new scripting functionalities, but it's something that should be thought about. And I think that like, given where the Lightning Network is at and its status as the first real multi-party static output protocol, like I think that should really be the starting point on where to think about this. Because this is going to be the first protocol that requires interaction between users to actually negotiate a payment. 
And itself, it, it has these liquidity constraints within it that, you know, it's, it's in, in practical use is not really going to be a massive issue within the Lightning Network itself, but strictly, technically speaking, is fungibility issues within the Lightning Network itself. And if you look at even like a centralized thing, having a, a meta protocol to interact with these other categories of second layer protocols can help fix some of those problems with the other protocols. Like in Lightning's case, like these liquidity issues, what if there was a standard protocol and, you know, big companies in this space, you know, interacted with this protocol so that a Coinbase account could be part of a Lightning payment. So that the, 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 the liquidity constraints of routing a payment through the Lightning Network can just be widened exponentially by routing into Coinbase. And then Coinbase can pretty much take an account balance there and transfer to any other account or just themselves route somewhere. And that can be linked in with the payment. So like that extends the liquidity and now to get a payment to you, instead of having to find a direct route through the lightning network to get to you, I just have to find a route to a centralized place that somebody um, who has a route to you will accept money through. And that can be atomic. And, you know, without some kind of meta protocol to really bridge the gap between all these second layers like it's not going to be seamless and frictionless for that type of interlayer you know interaction and activity to happen and that's really the level long term of interactivity we need between second layers to not start running into these you know, uh, consequences for fungibility and the economic consequences it, it creates when you have separate pools of money that is, or it is extremely costly and difficult for any kind of interaction to occur between. And, you know, really the, the only way to kind of solve that is to take all of these second layers that have their own strengths and weaknesses in, in different regards to that and link them all together like allow one layer's weakness to be reinforced through another layer's strength and you know like i said like i don't think this is something that urgently needs to happen like right now 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 but this is something that needs to be like people need to be thinking of this now and considering this now and at least looking forward to how to begin to construct and, and develop something like this. Because if these second layer protocols really start proliferating and taking hold before even some rough idea on, on how to have some meta protocol like this, you know, organized, like that's going to entrench itself and it's going to be harder and harder to integrate something like this into that mess and it'll inevitably start having real economic consequences real consequences to fungibility because of how a technical thing is approached and i think that that's something that it needs to be considered and really you know taken into account as new layers are brought online and become practical like ideally hopefully one day it, it might even get to a point where people who develop a new second layer protocol just take into consideration from the start of designing it, fitting into an existing meta protocol for second layers. And this is really something that I haven't seen anybody talk about, anybody really think about or propose ideas for, even though like, you know, the, the interactivity between different layers and, and chains is something that is so widely talked about as, as a powerful capability of these platforms that enables new things. You know, I see like everybody is constantly talking about that and, and thinking what will this enable and like how will this change things. But this, this kind of nitty gritty very important foundational detail is not something I've ever seen talked about anywhere. And so I just kind of wanted to like throw that out there and just 
try to start a conversation around that, you know, make that a, a topic or a concept that people are thinking about and discussing, because I think it's really important. Like that. I, I don't think people have, have really started looking beyond the developers building the stuff at the long-term future of second layers on top of Bitcoin and just the realities of how that will unfold, like how different design decisions will have economic consequences to them. And I think people beyond the developers building it need to start thinking about this. Like this needs to become a wider point of consideration and conversation and just something people think about because that's how you get more ideas and solutions to an idea. You get it out there and you actually create more exposure to it. And so, you know, that, that really kind of just wraps up all I wanted to say about this today. But, you know, like I said, for the next couple episodes of doing this, I'm kind of just going to try to pick different topics or areas of things I see as far as second layers in the, in the real long term that I don't see people really thinking about in detail or considering the consequences or implications for other things. And I, you know, I want to just put these out there. And then I guess when I'm done with that, I will figure out some other topical thing to do with the show. But in the meantime, you know, I hope this gave you guys a lot to think about and uh, I'll see you next time.